And people always people always do that on this show yeah. when they're dating. Yeah. And we always say, uh, he's single. They're like, yeah, but I'm not like single, yeah. single. And we're like, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you are. You're single. <laughs> That's what it Still is. Still free game. Like, don't you want to yeah. meet a guy who wants to marry you like next week? <laughs> I do. Actually, I do. Stop doing that. Don't do it. Your boyfriend. <laughs> your boyfriend needs to hear these things, bro. <laughs> Is marriage really the end game? Yeah. yeah. You look forward to it. I look forward to it, but then I wouldn't be mad if I don't get married. Okay. Yeah. But you look forward to it. I do. Okay. It's like a, a fun stage in so life. So, like, coffee. what's what's the time range that you give like your boyfriend to say, "Look, yeah, we got to be dating for like what a year if nothing happens, if nothing pops. Look, I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna." I'm uh, not going to stop anyone from hollering at me or, you know, dropping that DM or whatever. I think two years. Yeah. Two years. That's, 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 that's a long time. That's a long you want to date for two years? Two without years. certainty. Before, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a long before time. I start, before I start, like, actually mm. saying, you know what, I, I, I may be in a relationship, but mm, if, if someone more serious comes up. <laughs> it'll take you two years to say that. No. I'm a good no. person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if no, that's because good. For, for real, for, for, for gents, six months tops, I already Done. Know. I already, already know what I want to do. And the truth that's is, true. if you <laughs> don't want to marry her, you already know from the first day. First day? First day. You know. You already know <laughs> if you don't want to marry her. If you just want to smash, you already know. From the first day. What? Yeah, you, you know. already know. <laughs> so why don't guys then say well, because we, we don't like like the accountability and honesty all the time. Because sometimes we're just not ready for it. Sometimes we just want to smash and then move on. I think men are actually scared mm. of disappointing. No, I that. think, quite honestly, I think that men don't want... Men want a woman who is as committed as a woman that is trying to get married. So they, they want the is full that not package. What, is that not what you package. want from a man as well? No, not necessarily. If he says we're just smashing, cool, let's just smash. But guys don't want that. Guys literally want... No, the thing is, no, guys no. want that. They're just not sure if you're going to agree. Exactly. A guy, yeah. wants to, a, a guy wants to... Might know that he's never going to marry a girl, but he wants her to think that because the level of love and commitment she has, even with, even with the, the, the smashing and the level of effort she will put for a guy <laughs> she might marry yeah. is different. From a guy she knows. She yes, but what, what Tad's is saying is that some guy will also realize that if I tell her that I just want to smash, mm -hmm. some women will not just want to smash. They will only let a guy smash if they feel like this could be a be relationship. Something. And then I, I when they that. give, and the smash for, you know, like if you are smashing so someone because you want to marry them, like that smash is different because yes. it's like little campaignish. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a little it's campaign different. flavor. Like foot forward. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Do you that for no, no, for no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were filming already. Ah. No, are we not filming already? We are. Yes, so we'll keep it. No, we'll keep it. Yeah, we'll definitely keep it. That's gonna be the intro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like I was saying, guys will sacrifice mm -hmm. their own integrity because they're like. If I tell her that I just want to smash, she's going to say no. She wants something serious. Mm. So I'm going to tell her I want something serious just so I can smash her. Because the truth is, if that I just is, said, we just want to smash, she's going to look at me and be like, but, nah, you don't deserve this. so dishonest and oh, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah I, mean, no, but it, I think it also depends with the vibe that um, it started off as. Like, if we start off and let's say we meet and, mm -hmm. you know, we're actually mingling. And then the lady, um, you know, she... Let's lose, let's just say, she becomes very comfortable. Right. Mm. I'm going to reserve that statement to say, ah, let's do something serious. Because you know, it comes with a lot of headaches. And, um, <laughs> you know, ladies, they love commitment. So mm -hmm. usually a man will just continue to go with the flow. When the girl then, the question is going to come. You know it's going to come. Of course. Yeah. But you'll be like, ah, I need to enjoy for the moment. You know, continue to smash, smash. But you know, <laughs> the yeah. question is going to come to say, point, so what are we? What are we? What are we? <laughs> you become like, ah, why is it coming now? Like, you know, my wife, what my wife always oh reminds my gosh. me. Oh, my gosh. When I started uh, hanging out with my wife, 
I told her off the bat, I was like, you know what? I just want to hang out. I'm not looking for anything serious. What, what, what? This, you know, she always tells me, like, I don't know how, why you had this God. And I was, we were just hanging. Yes, it was cool. But in that, now, in, that, in her being cool with that and us hanging, that, that actually just took the guards down and finally got to actually know each other well. And then, it, it then we, res- we went to something else. Right. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. But, uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's an interesting one. Absolutely. <laughs> the motherland, the African man. Long as I'm alive, I'm going to make a plan. Strong host to break, got long walks to take, got no votes to make, but don't bet we pray. African man, yeah. the African male iris through the eye of an African male. I think with yeah. I think there's more authenticity with less expectation. Like when you know right. it's yeah. likely not going anywhere. Just yeah, exactly. Just, just, yeah. Yeah. It's easier cool to vibes. be your real self. self. Yeah, exactly. quicker. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Guys, we'd <laughs> like to say welcome to the show, and we just decided to get right into it, yeah. um, because the, these two people that are with us, they, they love talking, so we figured, you know what, let's just get into it. But <laughs> we'd like to thank you for joining us for another episode of the African Male Iris. My name is Prayer Soul. I'm DJ Tino, um, and you see a familiar face, I'm sure, from uh, yes. our prior episode. <laughs> hey, you want to introduce yeah. yourself again? I'm Zen Z. Thank yeah. you for coming yes. back, Zinzi. Zinzi, thank you yeah. for coming back yeah. after sharing so much from that last episode. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, wow. we'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Tatenda here. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Tats, thank you for coming through, bro. We really appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot for having me today. Just yeah. to mention, uh, <laughs> prayer, prayer uh, sang at uh, Tats' wedding. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. I actually yes. DJed yes. at but, uh, Tats' wedding. But no, the funny <laughs> thing is... Yeah. In, in my mind, I actually wanted to see Prayer Soul perform, but I didn't. You never did, actually. I, I never, I, I never you did. Actually and I think didn't. also, wow. even yesterday, I think I was like, you know, when I was talking to my wife, I was like, yeah. did you even mm-hmm. get a chance to go to the bathroom during the, during the <laughs> wedding? But I was like, <laughs> that's how hectic it was. Yeah, wow. we, I don't think us too, I, I don't think we both ever got yeah. to, I think so much has happened, but so. I missed the Prayer Soul um, oh, man. Yeah, uh, man. thing, but I heard that he did um, a that's wonderful. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, yeah. It was a beautiful wedding, bro. Like it was, very nice. it was nice. a beautiful. The venue wedding. was amazing. Man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, to tender, I don't know. Yeah. Um, intro about yourself. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Oh, okay. I'm to tender. Uh, used to be on radio on Star FM, known as Taz, the Total Package. I miss it a lot. I, I won't yeah. lie. Um, uh, um, I'm married. Yeah, I'm 38. Going on to thirty nine. I wish I would go back to thirty. <laughs> so I feel like uh, those were the most craziest time of my life um, yeah, during yeah. the thirties. Thirties were the proper dirty thirties. Right, um, right. We'll get into yes. that. You can do everything and anything like without that. any, without any, no one asking you questions. I think you're like at your at your prime in your thirties, but I think maybe your forties are more exciting. But we, I'm still yet to see that. But right, uh, right, right. Yeah. So. Um, yes, I, uh, as I mentioned, I am married. Um, I used to be um, a radio presenter yeah. at Star FM. Did that for a good six years. Nice. Um, really, really enjoyed my time there. Um, DJ Mox. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, and Ted was such a Mox. really cool DJ, like wow. I have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. So I mean, at a time is- when we... Uh, prayer sword come for interviews. Yeah, right. station. Yeah, right. those yeah. days I think yeah I was like uh, a producer for you oh. know the, one of the main shows at the yeah. time. You know, yeah. moving through the ranks, so we get to see like stars there now, um, the likes of prayer soul. <laughs> stars. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you name it. Um, yeah. The late uh, Olvam Tukuzi was there as well. Yeah. I got to see nice. them. You see all of them. Even nice. international artists. Awesome. Um, during Very my good. time there, I think I had. Um, privilege of actually getting to interview like international artists like you know and I was I think I would actually laugh with um DJ Mox so there's time when DJ Mox called in sick and usually I'll be his standing guy and oh, that right. time I'm like every time you call in sick there's always an international artist who's coming, who's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and who just tell you take it take it do write it, it. Yeah. Yeah. right so you get up to see like you know interviewed likes of I've interviewed likes of Mr. Easy um oh. I've interviewed um 
Amara Brown. I've interviewed um, Kofi Lumide. That was like one of my favorite. Um, I yeah. also did Legend. for Morgan Heritage. Nice. Just to name a few. So yeah, nice. it's, it's awesome. also had its perks, man. It was nice. That's great. It was That's nice. Great. I remember I, I, I was an aspiring radio presenter at some point. Even sent my demo tape and everything. Really? <laughs> Never got a response. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. How so, bad was uh, this demo? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, yeah, I know. I, I, I put a lot of work in that. Demo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I felt I did. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, guys. So I, I think today um, I just wanted to start off with... Um, Going going a little bit uh, back in time, you know. Even Tats just mentioned about uh, the early thirties, how good it was. Mm -hmm. Just going back to the high school days, eh? um, what kind of what kind of uh, individual were you in high school? Were you were you famous then? Were you popular? <laughs> uh, or were you like the ladies' man? Or for for um, since you were the guys like swimming on you? I mean, personally speaking, ah. Uh, was very, I was very timid. I had, a, I had bad acne. In high Are school. you serious, bro? Bro, yo, serious? Really? Like an outburst. I think when um, around thirteen years. Yeah. And now that shattered my confidence, bro. Mm. You know how it is with acne. You know? and yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't really in with the ladies too much. Um, I think playing basketball kind of helped. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you've got yeah. the height for it. But what yeah. were you you? The ones that you would see you're attracting are not necessarily the ones you want. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so I would say uh, in terms of that area, I was a bit of a late bloomer. Then I think maybe I'll, I'll let you guys tell the, tell us your high school experience, then right. we'll move from there. Mm. But, yeah, yeah I, wasn't, I wasn't very popular. Um, I was a good basketball player only, but with the ladies, it was... <laughs> eh, <laughs> <laughs> and Zizi, how was how was high school for you? Um, I'd say high school was high school, I was very I was like the quiet girl. Um what? Yeah, I was actually like I was I was like the quiet girl, but in a clique of popular girls, if that makes sense. Mm. So I think I also um because I was quiet, you'd get like guys that like me. And my friends were more confident to talk to the guys that like me. So I'd like be so uninterested, but I was kind of like the bait. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like guys would like be like, oh, you know, we like her or whatever. And then my more um, outspoken or confident friends would like then obviously form friendships with the guys. And I was just like so uninterested. I was like... <laughs> And yeah, she, I she think I think a, still you prove a common fact that us yeah. guys kind of go for the one that is a bit <laughs> chill. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so yeah, I was, I was I was pretty quiet until maybe sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, interesting. Then, okay. yeah, I, I did have my pro problematic phase, where <laughs> like I was no like yeah, I was not like kind of uh, popularish and did like attention from guys and stuff, but. Most of my high school life, I was just, yeah, I was just, yeah. Okay. Mm. I wasted time. <laughs> 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 wasted time. <laughs> Tats, man. How was, How was yours? How was your experience? Man, my <sighs> high school was kind of crazy, man. I think yeah. form, form one, um, I was just quiet. Started talking to girls, I think form two. Mm -hmm. I think form two second term when it was like rugby season. When I started playing rugby. playing rugby. Yeah, so you would... Um, the that's rugby dudes always... Yeah, yeah. No, of course. Standard. They were like the superstars. <laughs> they were. Yeah, they, they were. They probably still are. Like, generally, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time, um, I was playing rugby. Um, but, you know, like, I went to an old boys' school. Um, and I was actually a boarder. So, you know, you'd be like, okay, so there's this new interest of, like, liking girls. Because, you know, you'd have, like, girls coming from our sister School. schools and yeah. then you also hear other schools as well like when you just go and meet at like um debate clubs and stuff like that right. i actually remember the funny thing was i was in form two and i was in my dorm and one of my seniors he was form, it was form four at the time 
his name was um, um, Hawadi. He became the head boy um, two years after that. And he came to the dorm was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm not doing anything. He was like, where are your number one right now? I want you to come for me, with me to um, junior debate. Mind you, to go to junior debate, guys used to fight. Uh. Way, but you're like, you know what it is like? You're like, you, like you go for the junior debate meetings, right? When it's time to go there now, the bus has come there. You're seeing other cats that you've never seen at debate. But because of seniority, uh. <laughs> so he needed that senior. She, or they were like, hey, Who's going to get you in? They started yeah. there. Come into the bus, you come, come. Then you pull you to come inside. Yeah. Get into the bus. Because you'll be you'll be vapored because of seniority. Yeah, yeah. He tells you get up and get out. That's, that's yeah. what you gotta do. Yeah. Like, hey. But I wanna see that's when I said the scene, okay. We're now going to Con, we're now going to Chesapeake. I'm like, mm. okay. Right. That's why people go in. Yes. <laughs> that's why <laughs> that's people call you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you be so so shy. Yeah. Right. Don't you don't even speak anything. You're just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> And you also got your friends that are there as well. There are maybe two or three, four more guys that have come through. Then, you know, you start to meet um, girls of, of the same stream. And yeah. during mm -hmm. those days, it was so funny, though, I think about right now that we didn't have social media. But people used to know each other mm -hmm. through schools to say, oh, it's like a cheesy there is. Or at P, but I'm a form two there. Yes. Like, exactly. You know, but yeah. there was no social media, but they'll speak but within they were, their circles. there were chicks that were trending. Yeah. <laughs> Already. Yeah. Even the, even without social media. That <laughs> is so true. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Like, funny, funny thing that used to happen in high school. Um, there was, like, a board where um, on Valentine's, like, there's, like, the board written in blue would probably be Falcon College. Written in red would be Petra. Written in, like, it was color-coded. Uh -huh. So, literally... If your name is not on that board, it's like you're the biggest loser, literally, because no one sends you flowers. Like, what do you mean? What? And the pressure was like from the time you're like in form one. There's always there's already pressure. So like there's people who obviously had older brothers who could say, Hey bro, send me flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I need to represent. But like if you if you're just wow. chilled, it's like, wow. You are not carrying roses and your name's not on the board. Wow. You know? And the, and and there was obviously the, there was a classist thing. There's no social media, but obviously you want the falcon flowers. You don't want the... <laughs> 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 so yeah. it was already, like, there was a lot of, uh, like, classist stuff like that that was happening. Mm. But in retrospect, like, you look back now and it's like, did high schools really matter? Like, <laughs> yeah. did, did, did the guys at the most elite schools really make it more than the ones that didn't? And that's not really the case. It was case. very interesting, <laughs> actually. So yeah. But for like prayer, you know, you know, when I look at prayer, I'm thinking, this guy, when did he, if he started playing the guitar in high school, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so with the music, the funniest thing is I only discovered that I could really sing. I always loved music and i always loved singing along to music and watching shows and whatever yeah. but i never thought i was a good singer and i never th never saw myself as that person i secretly i always wanted to be that but mm -hmm. I, I just never thought it you know i just never knew and i only discovered i could sing like late um when i was 18 so it was like my last year of high school all right, all right. is when i actually discovered i could sing mm -hmm. but my first, I think first year, first two years of high school, I was like super shy, man. Oh, like yeah. I was super shy because I'm <laughs> telling you, like I was cool with the boys and whatever, yeah. but with girls, yeah. I mean, they, um, I don't know if it was true or not. Like I never really found out, but there was a, there was um, a girl, like my boys came and it wasn't just my boys. It was a couple of people who said, this girl likes you, bro. Yeah. She spoke about you and she said, yeah, prayer is kind of cute. Mm -hmm. So I think she must have just made some comment, right? Yeah. And everyone who was there thought, oh, okay. wow, really? You know, yeah. we need to go and tell him. Mm -hmm. So her name was Rejoice. And then and you remember. she was pretty. <laughs> like, yeah. she was really pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so these people are now telling me, yo, Rejoice says you, you, you're cute. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so what am I supposed to do? Yeah. <laughs> What, what from now? And like, I remember yeah. trying to say hi to Rejoice. Guys, I think that was one of the most embarrassing <laughs> things I ever did. 
Like, I think I just went up and just said, hi, how are you doing? And she was like, hi. But she was like, so, because you know how women like develop faster. So yeah. this whole guy is coming to talk to them at form one is not even a she thing for no them. She had no idea what you yeah. were going through. Yeah, she she <laughs> had no clue what I was going through. And I'm sweating and I'm like, <gasps> so I just go there and I'm like, hi, how are you doing? And she's like, oh, I'm good. And she looks at me and she smiles and I'm like, is she smiling? Because I'm nervous and I'm looking funny. Is she <laughs> laughing? <laughs> like, what is, you know, like, ah. Oh but gosh. like form three going onwards yeah. uh then i like peaked my my confidence that started picking yeah. up from there and that's when i was i started like talking to girls um but i was a, a bit of a joker in class and whatever and it was like a level areas when i started dating like my first girlfriend was actually when i was 15 i think okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah did you did you have a, have a moment uh, <laughs> i think that was around maybe form three yeah. where you'll be like <laughs> you'd write down a list to say, okay, so I've been with, I've been with. Oh, <laughs> black book. Oh you'd my be gosh. counting down, <laughs> I've been with, I've been with this one, I've been with. And usually those days, like, relationship used to last, like, what? <laughs> Two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three months. I never used to go, yeah. yeah. Legit. Two months, <laughs> three months. Three months would be a lot. Actually. Yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. that's a that's max a long, day. Yeah. Three months. <laughs> <laughs> that would be, you guys are serious. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are good at reading signals, though. Still, you know what? Till today, I I cannot read signals from from women. Someone so you're saying someone can tell me that you know what that girl there likes you. Likes you. Like and how? What did you see? Well, really? you guys are very good at that. Uh, well, from from a female perspective, I'm sure you, male signals are they very obvious? I think, I think I male think signals are very obvious. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, 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 I feel like I feel, yeah. I feel like yeah, men I think will literally either approach you or get someone to tell you. Like they'll yeah. get the message across. Yeah. Like at by all means necessary, they'll get the <laughs> message across. But in terms of um, women now trying, because the thing is, there's a stigma against women saying, "I like a guy," yeah. because I think. It's, it's it's like very unfortunate, but if you tell a guy you like him, it's almost like he's going to say, okay, cool, we can kick it. But um, he's going to obviously then think you were... You want him you've more taken than he wants the, you. Yes, yeah. and unfortunately, the, you're like already <laughs> on the back foot. So he kind of controls. There's always... A relationship always has an owner, and you concede ownership if you make the first move <laughs> as the female. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so if the guy approaches you and then you say yes and you like the guy, yeah. so who's the owner in that? Then it depends on how you relate. If you are texting first and double texting, he's the owner, you know. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the one who's loved the, one the who's most. Yes. The one, the the one, one who gets the attention. Yes, that's the owner. That's the one who the is person that's the one more likely to end the relationship anyway. The person yeah. who's receiving the, the um, attention. Yes, that's mm. literally the owner mm. of the relationship. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And who's you so who's the owner? Who's the owner of your <laughs> relationship? <laughs> <laughs> now we need to ask the question: Who's the owner in your relationship? <laughs> exactly. I'm not the owner. Oh my gosh, I am not the owner. <laughs> Are you the owner in your relationship? <laughs> I'm not the owner. Oh. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> But can't really? you, take on, you, can't, you can't take that ownership. The dynamics can change mm. with time, but I, I do also feel like once an owner is established, that's yeah, it. you can be married to someone and you know who the owner is. You know who, who wants the relationship more, even in a marriage. Interesting. Mm. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So yes, it will never be in... the same, huh? Yeah. So mm. wait, Zizi, are you, you saying that put... in every relationship... There There's owner. one person who wants it more than the other. That is the truth. I think so. Mm. E like to find equal interest. <laughs> to find equal interest. If you don't know that, it means you're not the owner. I'm sorry. Of your relationship. <laughs> 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 moving along. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh That's, my God. This is so interesting. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. What's, what's your okay. Guys, guys what please what, what, in the comment yeah. section, uh, um, please yeah. let us know what you think. What I you think really want to know. So, the, so there is an owner mm. in a in a relationship. Okay, so if you're not the owner, let's just say, okay, you're saying the owner. I think you gave examples to say. Yeah. You know, if, if you're double texting, you're the one who texts first. You initiate. Um, you initiate the conversation first, and you're the last one to say. 
good night or or whichever. <laughs> yeah. <way. laughs> yeah. Let's just say if your partner messes up, mm-hmm. let's say he messes up, mm-hmm. doesn't that change the roles? Because automatically you lose your guard. Something you take if the ownership. You get, yeah, because yeah, yeah, if you get caught true. in the wrong, let's say if you get caught, you know, you know, yeah. you're caught, you're texting a, a, um, an, um, another girl, and it's looking yeah. funny. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's not clean. Definitely, you're, I'm the you, one. Like, you're gonna yeah. lose your guard eventually. Yes. <laughs> you are, and you have to take ownership at in that moment. This is why people kind of can tell if a guy is a guy. If I know that I've got this friend and he's in a relationship or he's married, and he never posts his wife, like this week is just every day, love of my life. <laughs> 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 The ownership like, is the ownership people, is like, gone. Quite honestly, everyone knows this guy messed up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, this guy oh messed up. Wow. <laughs> and and so he is in a position where he can lose this person, so he's not the owner anymore. <laughs> hey. Wow. You know what? We definitely need uh, we definitely need to get <laughs> comments on this. I really want to know what people think about this. Because it's such an interesting dynamic. <laughs> it's very rare. It's, it's very rare to 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 have two people who uh, who have equal interests in the relationship. Wow, yeah. it's like very rare. Mm. Interesting. So not to not to say that if you are not the owner, you are not loved. No, yeah. I absolutely okay. get that. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. Okay. But, but no, but I find that but very there's intriguing. There's someone that's yeah. running things. There's someone that's more likely to be the one to take the relationship to the next level. You know, yeah. So. Mm. So the owner, the owner is most likely to dump the relationship, or take it further, or you know, like because mm-hmm. the the person that is not the owner of the relationship in most cases is afraid to make drastic moves because <laughs> they might lose their <laughs> their person. <laughs> 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 That's yeah. interesting. But like, I, yeah. I don't know what you guys think though. Like. Um, yeah. And usually oh. men are the owners, quite frankly. Because yeah, men generally... No, but if, yeah. if you say we're the ones who want to, we're the owners. Okay, I understand. Yeah, the owners, but I don't know if you guys also have the same feeling as well. Men cannot dump a girl. It's better for me to wait for her to That's dump the most me. horrible thing that men do, I think. Why? I think we that can't. is the worst why thing do you that think men it's do. The, why do you think it's because the worst? Because I think, I think being an ass... And just um, saying that, look, I, I, I can take accountability for this relationship ending and it's fine, but I don't think we're going to work out in the long run or whatever the case is. Just being honest to mm-hmm. say, yeah. you know what, we can't make this work. Is better than, because I think what Dragging guys they do is <laughs> they frustrate you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They uh, <laughs> will talk to a bunch of other girls. They'll just do a lot of really nasty things. So that you dump them. But then you have the girls that have a long threshold that are just like, ah, he's going to come around. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's I better mean, to just rip the cord. Yeah, but I mean, that's like, a, don't you think that's a personality thing? Because loose. I've I've met guys who are just like, yo, I just feel like it's bad luck to to, to break someone's heart like I that th- and just tell them that, you know, I don't want you. Guys just they want to be like accountable. I think it's just not wanting to be accountable. Like, it, no one wants to be the villain in the story. So when the story of how did you break up, you don't want to, as the guy, be ha- have have been said to be the one who dumped the girl. No, no. But because the thing you is, don't want the thing to is, be accountable. When the guys are sharing with the guys, they will tell you straight up. They'll just say, yo, bro, I, I decided a long time ago that I didn't, I didn't want to be with her, but I just didn't want to be the one to. But I thought, sorry, I can just wait a, two, 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 three, four, five years. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, that's better. No, come on! <laughs> no, but no. I'll just drag her along. But women, women, women also do the same, though. No, I think mm. I think when women do that, mm. it's a very short. It's usually a very short period before she leaves. So okay. she will decide that, okay, I want to leave, and then she'll like maybe she doesn't want to leave and be single, so mm. she'll start searching, or maybe she doesn't want to leave and. Um, still have feelings for you, so she's getting over you, but she's still sticking around. But it's a very short period. And when she walks out, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Like, it's done. It's it's, it's so done. hard to get a girl back. When a woman's face. It so is so hard <laughs> to get a girl back. I want to ask, so do you think a woman already knows when she wants to bounce from that relationship? And how far along? 
is she gonna know that you know what i don't want this relationship anymore um i think i'm done with it or do they even have that kind of feeling to say it's it's done yeah i think i think yeah. i think i think women do know and i think um when they know they start planning their exit already but yeah. between hey, but between and it's a short period between the prayer? time do you remember the guest we had olivia she's a divorcee now yes uh, yeah. and she told us that she pl- she had already decided to, to leave do, to leave 3 years or so before she actually did and in between those 3 years they actually had another child oh <laughs> That's probably why it <laughs> became three. Wild. What's that child's name? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> that's, <I'm saying. laughs> no, but, but yeah. yeah, that's wild. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you a wild story though. Yeah. Um, I did it go for three years. Right. Um, you know, already, was already getting set to get married and everything. Yeah. Um, she then went to the states to right. do like a one year. Um, you know what chartered accountants do. Right. One year to do um, articles or whatever. Yeah. And you know, I did this first for three years. Huh? You're thinking, ah, I Solid. think now she mm. really gone to see the titties and everything. Imagine. Right. Ah. Goes to the States. Let's say you're closer to the day where you guys were discussing, which may be around this time. She just decided just to cut the cord with a message. Are you serious? With a text was message. Whilst oh. in the States. Yeah, whilst in the States. A text with message. A text message. And I actually, I actually remember it was a message. And, you know, as, as the time builds up, you kind of kind of know. But as yeah. you were saying that, she found a, a, a situation to use. Because I was like, ah, but is that really that easy, Nelly? Mm. Or is there something else? You just find a small little argument that you guys right. have. And um, that was, and I remember I was like, hey, I got into a mode of like depression because I remember the day, you know, I said, well, sometimes my gets up, we'll see now. Yeah, <laughs> my gets up at that time, yeah. I wake up. Um, I remember the day, it was on a Friday night because I was going to do my show on a Saturday. Right. I wake up, imagine I want to go do my show. I wake up, I open my message and I see this long text. I read it. I'm like, ah, this is done. Like this. Then you're like, you know, you go and then, of course, that the first thing you do is that, you know, like um, my um, best friend is in the States and his cousin is in Zim. He's also a close friend of mine as well. I sent them the text together and my friend was in the States. I was actually going to work and I was just about to start work and he called me like he was like, um, and imagine the time, the time difference, difference. Exactly. It was late. So he's he's like calling me and I'm like, no, I'm just about to start raid the ward. Then I could hear him talk to his wife to say, um, he was like, ah, oh, no, 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 I have to, I have to talk to Tatiana right now. And the wife was like, cool, cool, cool. Kochi, what's wrong? Then he says, I saw the message. And it's like, dude, I know you really love that chick, but look, you just do your show, kick your show, talk after the show, but she, ah. But in his mind, I knew he was saying, hey, I don't know about one, I don't know about one. And I'm like, I know it's okay. Ah, let me just do the show. Yeah. Did the show. And you know, you, you got this pain that hits yeah. you. And it hits you on your heart. I, I can't even explain oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was yeah. like, you know, and on that Saturday, like, I used to go and play basketball with my friends, like at my friend's house. Uh, we'd go there and the my friend's cousin that I play with, um, he was one of my groomsmen at, at the um, wedding. To come about whatever after that, it just you wanted to tell me something. Chi, but I will not just a phone here. Picked up his phone. He was like, ah, as Bangolans, he just saw the first lines. Yeah, I'm a one. And it's like, ah, okay, ah, it was a tower. Okay, it was a tower. <laughs> time, time went by. I didn't know today. I'm actually, it's affecting me like physical. You know, I'm a person who like, who like to take walks and exercise all the time, but I was actually losing weight. Like I became quite skinnier. Um, and it took, I, it took a bit of time to get right, over it, recover. Mm. to actually recover. You, you go into a mode of, you're now just seeing different girls. 
you are, yeah. you know, you're just sleeping around, you're now using your um, radio influence at that time. And, you know, it's, you know, you be like, you know, whatever, you're just doing whatever, okay. yeah. whenever. <laughs> exactly. Uh, going to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> trying to get over the feeling, but I, right. I'll kid you not. Um, every time that you summer the girl, yeah. as soon as it's just done, the feelings just come back. I don't know. They just, it just it's taunts like you like you just want it. It's just like a temporary yeah, it's, it's just like a temporary fix. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, the feeling just come back. That hurt comes back. You keep on thinking about it like, ah. Yeah. But gee. So. Yeah. And, the, and they say heartbreaks uh, affect men more than women. Eh? I think so. I think they do. I think so. Mm. Yeah, look at her. She's like, what? <laughs> no, no, I, I believe it. I actually think they actually shape men. You think shape the, men. Yeah, they, they, they shape a man's perception of women in general. Like, there are people who, like, are very vocal um, and opinionated online. And you can see that this guy was hurt mm. by a woman. Mm. Mm. If you track back. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can kind of, <laughs> like you can tell that, okay, the emotions behind this tweet, this man was like really hurt by a woman. Mm. And he cannot forgive women in general now right. for what he mm. went through with a woman. I mean, I don't know if it's correct to say uh, heartbreaks affect men more than women. I just feel like society has trained women to take them to take the heartbreaks better. Because I don't think that the pain they feel is any less than what we would feel. Because especially in like on the onset of dating. I mean, as as women get older, obviously, you know, they've 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 dated a bunch of guys, so it's not exactly the same. Yes, yeah, so the it's, same it's way with a guy. Thing, hey? Yeah, it's and an the same and the same thing. same thing with a guy where the first two three girls you've dated, you know, when it ended, it's not exactly the same as the last three that you dated, mm -hmm. or the next three that you dated afterwards. You know, I feel like the pain can be the same, but yeah, man, like. I think uh, the recovery time for men is just longer because because it's, it's also <laughs> we're just like wow <laughs> yeah it's also rare mm. I mean most it's also rare for women to end it's it's not as common for a, a woman a to end a relationship than a man if you, if you if you think about it because I mean she did mention to say a woman already knows that she doesn't I want guess that. yeah she's yeah. trying to find the act but. For a man, when it actually happens to you, it's unexpected. Exactly. And, and it comes through like, a, you know, the, <laughs> our pride as well. I think that's what also makes yes. us yes. Ego. recover a bit Ego. late. Yeah. Because we don't, men are just generally, we just don't like sharing. The fact that my girl is going and someone else is going to enjoy that space, yeah. I think that's yeah. what. There's also probably the fact that, like you guys said, um, men know when they're going to, when they want to marry a woman. Yeah. So if the woman that you wanted to marry decides that she doesn't want you anymore, that is very Ooh. hectic. Tough. Because we, um, we, as long as I love a man, even if I can see that I don't like this about him or whatever, or there's many things that I just don't think I can, you know, handle about him. Yeah. If I have chemistry with him and I love him, I'll make it work. I'll try to make it work, which is not the logical way of thinking because men already know that tick, tick, um, red flag, red flag. I can't. <laughs> yeah, Just no, yes, that, that so I think you're right. I so think the, you're right. Yeah. So the breakup then with the woman, I think it's because I can likely make it work with probably any guy who has the majority of the things I want. But with guys, it's very rare to find that she's a woman I'd marry. Mm, so, yeah. like, I see what you, 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 you when you yes. lose her, then you know it's not going to be easy yeah. to find, find another, another and I one think, you would like to marry. Yes, yes. Mm. No, I think that's a great point, actually. Yep. That's a great point because it's also not a common thing for a guy to, to decide that this is a good woman and I want to marry her. 100%. And when a man gets to that point... And then loses that particular woman. You. It is yeah. tough. 
Yeah. Major depression. Right? Yeah. But <laughs> but what okay, depression. so Tad's yeah. Tad's told us about mm. that. Have you ever been in a situation where the relationship ended and you didn't see it coming? Myself, no. I had to well, I had to end the um relationship prematurely because well that was that was still in high school times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 18, 19. I remember we had just come from writing our exams. And she did well, and I didn't. And that affected me. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> was that the reason? Hey? Was that the reason? You know what? It's, it's that thing where... Very logical. Yeah, so it's this thing where, okay, she's now moving ahead, and I have to, I have to rewrite. Uh. So that so gap that she's so, so, yeah, behind. So me, I'm like thinking, all right. I have to get my things in order. She's already moving another pace. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we're no longer at the same level now. So you bro- so you you dumped her. Yeah, I had to let her go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was it's very logical as well because <laughs> But she's a very good woman, eh? She's a very good woman. Oh, that, that's, that's very interesting. That, that, yeah, no. Uh, the man in me just felt like, you know what, uh, this is where you are now. You need to regroup, re strategize. She's now not at your level. She's moving ahead. So, no so let that And it, it so really Chino, also takes yeah. a lot for a guy to admit that she's not at my level. No, but okay, so in this society, let's say if your woman is a CEO and you're a you're branch manager. Corporate, so does that also affect you as well? Because that was are mainly you that was dating, like dominance. A, dating a CEO, are you saying? Like yeah, that? let's just say, I mean, you were saying oh. that she was going further, right? Yeah. And you had to like rewrite. So it's yeah. almost or the same Or let's say thing. your wife is promoted to become a CEO, or like surprise, surprise. But that's different because we have a history. Yeah, but I'm s- <coughs> but what I think what mm. Tads is asking is, mm. would that it might not affect you the same way because that was high school, right? Mm. Yeah. But would it be like a power dynamic that actually affects you? Mm-hmm. I doubt it. Uh, when it comes to marriage, and you've, as, as I'm saying now, you've. You've been married. You've ha- you have a relationship. You have a bond. I'm sure we'll find a way to work through that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But in those tender ages where you still, you know, as a man, you're still trying to find yourself. Mm. Yeah, and, and you're also stage, trying to find yeah. your ego as well. Yes, so yes. It, those things that, become that identity sort of important. And you st- still don't know. Okay, you thought that was the path, but you failed. So okay, what am I doing now? How am I redirecting? Right. And that in that space, I didn't feel like having someone. Um, having a, a partner was the right thing because I was like, okay, <laughs> I, need, I to need to focus on my focus life. Sort of thing, you know, because <laughs> I, I was here, dra- I was here drawing like uh, little roses for this girl. She was studying, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was actually studying. Yeah? <laughs> so yeah. So <laughs> wow. So what? What about this so-called um, whole phase, man? Hey. What, I think what? the whole I think the whole phase is an emotional reaction mm. to a heartbreak. Okay. Most times. Most times. You think so? Yeah. Most times I think um You went a whole like in your twenties? Um twenties. <laughs> ah, twenties no. Press so tell the truth. Twenties. <laughs> Press so tell, tell the truth. Press so tell the truth. Ah, twenties. Ah, twenties. Ah, 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 twenties. Ah, twenties. Ah. In my twenties. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Refresh. Um, ah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think you know what. To be honest with you, uh, I did, I did have like some really. Whole whole phase like <laughs> in my twenties, yeah, wholeish <laughs> moments like a lot in my twenties, mm. because that was a time when I was finding myself trying to figure out a career, and um, I had this degree but couldn't get any jobs because you know mm. it was like a social science degree, so you okay. needed to get NGOs. NGOs were leaving the country because of the political situation, mm-hmm. and um, I'd always thought. You know, I'm going to get a job and then I'm going to focus on my music and then I'm going to invest in real estate. So it was always music, real estate. So I needed to figure out what was coming first and how were we going to build this picture. And the music just came first. Like, because mm-hmm. I'm busy still sending out CVs. And then a friend of mine's like, bro, why don't you just like record one song, bro? Like, just record one song, just put one song on the CD and then just sell that and see if people will actually buy it. And I was like, 
yeah, I mean, I'm open to it. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, I record my first single, and I put it on the CD, and then I sell it, and people are buying it for like 10 bucks and three bucks and mm. whatever. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and then the Iranian guy who was selling me the blank CDs was mm. like, yo, bro, you've just made a thousand US. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you bought over 330 CDs, and how much are you selling them for? And I was like, three bucks. But some are paying more, like five bucks. He's like, yeah, so you definitely made a thousand now. Because he calculated for you, like, he was calculating yeah, for me. Yeah, because he, he was curious at the rate at which I would call him and say, yo, I need another need 50 more. CDs. He's like, huh? yo, I need another 100 CDs. Yeah. And he's like, bro, you're moving. You're making money. And I was yeah. like, oh. I am. But I chowed the money. Like, yeah, where's that money? Like, <laughs> I was like, where's that money, bro? So it's, it's it, gone to the street. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know, bro. Uh, so, uh, so, so, I mean, that I can't really say I was coming out of a of some serious relationship mm -hmm. and I had some big heartbreak and whatever. I feel like it was very, very separate. Mm -hmm. I was in a serious relationship, mm -hmm. and I. I at some point thought that, oh my gosh, maybe this, this one's the one. Mm. And then things didn't work out. It's a very complicated story. <laughs> <laughs> and um, after that, I was just like, um, you know what? I lost that girl. And I think I hadn't found closure from that relationship. Mm -hmm. So maybe not just a bad heartbreak. Sometimes it's also deep down, you still believe that there's that person. And that's the one. For me, so for me, for for a while, I did think that maybe I lost, maybe I lost her. You know, mm. um, there were things that would sort of then make me question to say, ah, did I, did I lose out and whatnot? Then, because of that, that unresolved closure and whatever, I was just like, you know what? Now I'm just gonna kick it. Mm. So that then I think that also happens when when if you have your your eyes set on someone. Anyone else that comes along, it's just like We're you just already gonna, know. Yeah, that. exactly. It's not serious because you want the other. Yes, so yeah. yes, and I think those are pretty much like those conditions. Yeah. Or sometimes you just decide you don't want to commit. You just want to have fun. Like mm. you're not really trying to be responsible. Mm. You are almost like enjoying your mm, your youth, mm -hmm. like silu. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> yes. so, so for me, exactly. I was, uh, I was, I was, a, I was a church boy, right? Mm. Right. Um, I, Tino, well, and, Tino it, and I actually made a church. Yeah. Is it yes. true what they say about um, church boys? Like, what do they say about church boys? <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are those are the naughtiest characters. Uh, it's, those guys, I, I knew uh, some those guys, guys. I knew some guys. They like mean, my baby. Yeah, Last knew, number, oh, of course. <laughs> Especially praise and worship. Guys. Yeah, guys, yeah. But I was, I, was, I, was, I was a bit of a straight and narrow guy. Um, then when I started working, of course I started working when I was in Sim. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, when I moved to a new life, I think it was what, 2008? Right. Moved, yeah, started working in 2008. Then 2009, um, the first time I got out of that bubble of church. Right. Right. The company sent me to to Zambia with a work assignment. So I was 22. They got me, they rented me a flat, paid for. Mm. They got me a car. Bro. Whoa. They gave me an allowance, 30 US dollars a day. Hey. This, this guy so was, you're 22. This guy was straight in <laughs> <laughs> At 22. At 22, I was Dude. in a foreign country. No one knows me. Yeah. I'm driving around. Go literally anywhere you want. No one knows you. I think that's when that freedom hit me. Like, like okay, you know, I'm out of that bubble. Let me have a little fun. <laughs> <laughs> and also, no, no, no one knows me here. So exactly. Like, yes. exactly. No so one you start knows feeling me. risky. Yeah. yeah. You start feeling adventurous. You're like, <laughs> yeah. mm. literally, literally every weekend I was out. Right. Right. We would work Monday to Friday, but from Friday to Saturday. Mm. <laughs> that was a very interesting time. <laughs> you see, twenties, twenties, twenties are definitely twenties. But uh, I, 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 yeah. I, 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 okay, I'll let you finish. No, well, I then got married. I got married earlier, uh -huh. twenty-two. I met my wife 
a year after that. So I had my year of... Uh, this guy didn't this guy didn't use didn't. his 20s. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Huh? <laughs> but I met the right woman. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Okay. And that's, uh, at the end of <laughs> the day, I mean, that's, that's what matters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but, but I, I, I had that year. That year was good. And I, I think I'm glad I had it. Because mm-hmm. now when you're married, like, even, even though I married early, I didn't have that wish or temptation to say, I just want to go and whatever, you know. Because mm-hmm. right. I had that... That time alone, I think everyone needs that. Yes. Just when you're by yourself making your own decisions, doing what you want to do, then get that out of the way. I think I want to ask you something quickly there. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, uh, it's something that I was discussing earlier on that. <laughs> Ted knows that back, I was right <laughs> back in the <laughs> days, <laughs> I think people used to like to marry, like, their aim was, my wife needs to be a virgin. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... What was instilled into us, that's what we, you know, growing up and stuff. But as you grow up, like, now I'm like, you know, um, you don't want that virgin anymore. Why am I saying that? It's because Mm -hmm. now I think people are now looking for people who have already experienced life. Like, I was like, hey, experience life. Mm -hmm. After that, they know what you want. And to be... In the house, and then you're now you're starting to see, it. okay, so, you know, the club could is actually nice. go out let me go every out. weekend. Yeah, me, uh, I want <laughs> to do one night stand or whatever. No, do everything. But there's two sides to that. Mm. Like, there's really two sides to that. Because the safer thing about marrying a virgin is that you are her only experience, right? So if, obviously, there's social media and, you know, which is the bad part. So mm-hmm. she might become ex- she might become curious and experimental in that regard, but the other side to what you just said is the worst case scenario is an ex who is the one that got away, who, like, she, every time you piss her off, she then thinks, oh, that ex. That's that guy. Mm. That guy. Because mm. you, you you don't want to also have the ghost of an ex that, like... It's still lingering. Yeah. No, but from, a, I think, what... What Chad is saying is more relevant to guys, yeah. I'm, because I'm so w- with with guys, when you when you sort of allow yourself that freedom, you almost um, you get the curiosity of just having fun with girls out of the way. Oh yeah, yeah. and then yeah. that doesn't distract you. So when you decide that you actually want to settle down, you really want to settle down for the right reasons. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily just, uh, you know, let me just, you know, get a nice girl. It's mm-hmm. it's deeper. Like, it, it just carries more weight. And, whew, yeah, marrying a virgin, I don't know, man. Ah, I'm, t- I'm telling you. It's, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's starting to, to sound <laughs> odd, I guess, now. But she needs to experience life. Because once she's inside and then she wants to experience life once she's inside, I'm mm. telling you, you're going to have a problem. But if you have someone who's already <laughs> experienced it and she's gone through... It means they're choos- they choosing she's, you. She's, she's gone through the assholes and whatever, you know, right. those guys that are rough and, you know. Yeah. She now knows what she wants. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, Welcome to Virgin. But, but, but it's a bit tricky. It's, it's, it's tricky. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I, I, I would go with what Tad is saying. Uh, it's tricky. Because, because as men, as men, uh, men, men value that. Men value um, um, purity. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In general. Yeah, that yeah. whole body count uh, conversation. Uh, how, many, <laughs> how, many, how many men has she actually yeah. 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 Uh, been in, been with and stuff? And mm-hmm. I still feel, well, j- for me, uh, that was that, it was a thing for me. It matters. It matters. Yeah, it matters. Yeah, for I mean, I for me, it doesn't matter as much as um, like there's a purity of character for me that seems to carry more weight, weight. Mm. because oh, yeah. there are people who have dated many guys but they have learned to speak up for themselves they've learned to be communicative mm. they've learned to be honest and to be vulnerable and vulnerable. they've because they've learned multiple guys yes mm. yeah because then you kn- you know when to stand up for yourself and you know someone who's kind enough for you to be vulnerable then you know that this person doesn't deserve my vulnerability. Because it's not like dating many guys uh, poisons the mind. 
it just exposes you to different people. The same mm. way when you've dated many girls, mm. you just get to know women more. You've dated many women, so now you start to know that, okay, some women are like this. Some have trauma because of what? Some just shut down when it's time to talk about their feelings. Mm. And some are not confrontational, and some are this, and some are that. So you just become a bit more sensitive. So when I look at it, I mean, I'm not but saying... Uh, for, for you, I think you are, you are saying it more from a getting to know someone, uh, the talking and everything. But I'm talking about sex. 100%, Having bro. sexual partners. Yeah. For a woman. Mm. Like, okay. So, yes. it, like, the last time I was here, I spoke about, like, the things that make a woman valuable. Right. Um, of which I think I mentioned youth, beauty, yeah. definitely purity counts. Right. But like, Wait. Like, when you guys say... Pu okay, but the issue I have here is <laughs> when you guys say purity and you're talking about the the number of men. So the more men she slept with is what? She's more impure. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so what are and men? Okay, so men are trash. Yes, yeah. men are trash. Men but you can't compare. Trash. You can't compare women and men when it comes to that. Uh, but why not? Please. Yeah. please no, please men, you women. can't. Men are... Yeah. Um, we, we... Okay, generally, men can have sex with a, with a woman and not... Have, have emotion. Yeah, have emotion. But for a woman to just allow a man to sleep with her, yeah, there has to be some kind of connection. Yes, you know, but, but, but the thing is, for these men to have sex in the first place, they are having sex with women. Yeah, I, yeah. I know. Yeah, because it's almost but like saying it's okay for a guy to have a head count of what 10. What is saying mm. is, what you're saying is quite a double standard. No, but that's what know. I'm saying. Although, you can't, although it you is can't fact, equate the... Yes, that is the reality. It is fact, the reality. But, to yeah. be, but to be fair, <laughs> yeah. to be fair, as much as you're saying, like, the more the, the body count matters from a male perspective, I also, personally, I wouldn't want to be with a guy that's been with a lot of girls. Too many girls. Like what's too what's too many girls? Mm. Give us a count. Twenty? It's a lot of girls. Twenty is a lot of girls. Yes. <laughs> like half of my uh. boys are already out. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. I, I, I feel like for I feel like <laughs> as much as men say, um, because uh women need a more deep connection with a guy for them to sleep with. I feel like those are the details, but the facts are, I just, I feel like if a guy has been promiscuous, it might matter to a woman that she's with a guy that hasn't been like overly promiscuous. I thought it was more to do with what he does with you now. If his past doesn't affect his now, does it yeah, matter? Yeah, of course. Uh, the same way, the, as much as he said, like if she's had many sexual partners, she's had many emotional connections with many guys, right? Mm -hmm. What if she hasn't? What if what if she can have sex without the emotional connection? That's a that's a problem. Because she could have because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know she could have uh, had she could have had a bad heartbreak and then she just had a whole, whole phase, phase of like four months. Yeah. And then she slept with four niggas or five. Mm. Yeah, not for me. <laughs> yeah, but then the thing is, like, how are you gonna it's know? The same thing happens with guys. Like, how like are you gonna know? Whole phase, he had, how am I gonna he had know? Yeah, because then girl. it's not like you know every woman is gonna be like, yeah, I had a whole phase, and then I you know smashed five niggas, and uh, yeah. oh, then I, I was done after that, good. and I'm good. I think unfortunately, because of how men put it like that, mm. um, the fact is that women do then cut their body count. They do. Heart. Yes, they because do. Like, I have a friend. So then now you can't <laughs> be authentic and honest with a guy that you're seeing because he's like, oh, 10 guys. Yeah. Now I have to say five. I, and I know. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, maybe five in a year. Not five. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have, a, do you know what? I have a friend of mine. I wish she could, like, just speak freely <laughs> in public on shows like this mm. because we have, like, really cool conversations. And we were talking about a video that was talking about body count. Mm -hmm. And then I'm laughing my head off. So I send this to her on Instagram and she's like, bro, I will let you know right now. In the streets, my body count is three. My real body count, however, is another number. 
<laughs> I don't know, like seven or nine or something. Mm. She's like, but I will always lead with three. Mm. She's like, be- because of how men think. So I'm always going to say three. And like, bro, I've seen so many women tone down into femininity and start acting like they are grounded and legit. And then meet some guy who you're just like, does this guy really know this who girl's past? Is. And then, boom, that guy marries her. Mm. The guy marries her and then they're married. And then you're like, hey. But does she change back to you? Who knows, bro? Like, because sometimes maybe they're happy. Like, I, you, you no, never really know. She'll, I just feel, she'll, I, I, she'll, she'll be tired now. She's done with that stuff. No, we don't know, but bro. Because <laughs> she might what, not what, be tired. It might be who she is. Maybe she comes back or maybe she's keeping it a secret. Maybe I don't know. But all I'm saying is the there's no... Guys do the same, exact same thing. Yeah. Like, a, the, the way a guy is, because guys will tell you, I'm not much of... Like, he'll complain maybe six months into a relationship and say... Why don't you reply texts or whatever the thing is? Mm. And for me personally, I don't have a problem with a person that's not a great communicator. I'm a terrible communicator. I'm we can talk once a day and that's fine, you know. But I have a problem if we meet and then you want to constantly be texting and you wanna constantly be calling me and you wanna constantly be communicating. And then three months later, now that you know that, ha, huh, we're good, then now you wanna Text me once a day. Like, I have a problem with changed behavior. But guys then say, no, but then that was the honeymoon. It means oh you pretended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you took it too far. Because, like, you literally were a whole different person. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, I'm busy. Yeah, because guys... I can't text you all day because I'm busy. And, and guys and will do that as well. I'm like... I mean, guys w- why do you will, do that? will play... <laughs> they'll play a character... Until they get the girl, and then when they get the girl, they can slip back into bad habits and yeah. then say, you know what, if you want to leave, you can bounce. But mm. they know that there are things that they have done but they are the owner. that the girls like. <laughs> but they're the, they the owner of the relationship now, so they're like, yeah, if you want to leave, you can leave. Yes. Yeah. That's crazy. And uh, I know, Titenda, how, how's the married life? I know you recently went to it. <laughs> the adjustment from the dating to... To marriage. To marriage. How's it been that for you? Mm. It's, it's been a a roller coaster. It's okay. it's it's a crazy dynamic. Maybe because I got maybe you could say maybe I got married a little bit late within the age. Um, some people maybe would like to call it that because I'm sure a lot of people they'll get married maybe the late twenties, early thirties. Yeah, but um, mid, mid to late thirties is common now. Eh? Yeah, in terms of uh, settling down. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not common. A lot of people are not coming actually. through with like maybe yeah. se- a second marriage will come through. They'll be like in their late mid thirties going to. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, changing from I was so used to um, not having to answer to anyone, right. not having you know um, I could go home anytime that I wanted. Yeah. I didn't owe anyone any explanation where I was, what I'm doing. But now because now you are with someone, and now you know. You tend to see, okay, so I can't just come home anytime that I want because mm. I have to respect someone else and also vice versa on her side as well. So it's just that that dynamic of getting to get to a an understanding yeah. of things. It's I think that was the hardest, or well, still the hardest thing that you know we're still going through still. in the order of marriage. So yeah, it's it's, but it's, you, it's nice. Do you know when you yeah. hear this? Yes. Do you? Do you then think that you adjusted quickly because you got married early? So the accountability to your wife became part of your everyday life. So it wasn't as big of a thing as compared to Tad's because Tad's then spent all of his 20s free and then into his 30s. And then he got used to his independence. I would Mm. would say, I would say yes. Right? Mm. Because, um, so you would say it's an advantage to marry early, just based on the adjustment yeah. process. The adjust, in my opinion, yes. yeah. Because when I moved to Zambia, that was actually my first time. Um, I was I was staying at home mm-hmm. um, with my mom. Right. Right. And uh, when I moved to Zambia, um, that was the time when I was, I like it was now like I've moved out. I'm right. Renting. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. That was my experience. And yeah. 
and I had that f- experience and for a short while, and I think I'm happy that I had it for a short period. And it, exactly, it did not, um, it wasn't hard for me to adjust to having someone live with me. Um, just, a quick, yes. just a quick question. Um, like, for now, mm-hmm. if, you, if your wife has to go somewhere for like three weeks, do you quickly adjust to, to that? Because I know a person that's been a bachelor for a long time can very quickly adjust to what would be more feminine roles mm. to run the household. So, like, is it is it now and is it not an issue for you? Like, if your wife needs to go somewhere for a month. Yeah, well, considering the kids involved, yes. Uh, but I keep myself busy. Um, the things that I start concentrating on, like I will start concentrating on the podcast, yeah. um, uh-huh. doing other things. I actually like my alone time. You know, that's another mm-hmm. thing I was, I was going to ask the ask the panel to say: mm-hmm. Are you managing to keep your individualism, your own yeah. hobbies? Are you maintaining your hobbies within marriage or within a within a relationship? Because that's also important in, in times when your partner is away. Yeah. Are you feeling that emptiness because now everything resolves, uh, you know, uh, revolves around, revolves around person, her, yeah. or you still have mm. an identity? You still have your friends. Mm. You still have your um, hobbies and whatever you can do to occupy your time, mm. and she gets to do what she needs to do, right? What, where she's going. So th- I, I, I'd, I didn't have that in the earlier stages of marriage, mm-hmm. but it's something we discussed and we started developing yeah, in the last five years and we've we've been intentional about it okay. do you need you to this day you need to leave leave the house go wherever you're going i will stay with the kids mm. hang with your people yeah i will have the same thing okay me i like doing this uh like now once a month we podcasting mm. she knows that day i'm not around the whole day she'll make a plan she'll do what she has to do and so we just switch and that's important. The individualism is so yeah. important. Because once you fully rely on your partner for everything, mm. you'll be very, very sad and depressed if they're not there. The same way, mm. once you fully rely on your individualism, it becomes very hard to like... So to do you do feel it. like you're going to... Like when you, when you hear Tads talk about the adjustments yeah. into marriage, mm. do you feel like when you get married, you're going to struggle with that? Um, I feel like... I feel like I, I'm very, I've become a very picky uh, person in terms of who I would date, who I would marry. So I feel like I would, I would have like very extensive conversations so that the adjustment is actually quite easy. No, the adjustment is never easy. <laughs> no matter how many conversations you're going to have. <sighs> it's like saying... I'm, I want to date this person for uh, three years so that I don't. I see all the red flags before we get married. All I'm saying, oh. all I'm saying is, if I had got married when I was like twenty five, mm-hmm. I would have had a different adjustment type of my expectations of what marriage is would have been very different. But I've had so many, like I, I think I just know. A, I don't know if I if I can say I know a lot about marriage, but. I've got many friends who have been married and divorced, who have been married, who have, like, who've had different experiences. Mm -hmm. So I kind of have, yeah, I have an idea of what to expect and I have an idea of what to discuss. Like, my date is not, what's your favorite color? My date is, (laughs) (laughs) my date is, do you want kids? Like, my date, my, my, like, a date, I would go on. I'd have very deep conversations with a person. And if that scares them, yeah. But I'm now very intentional when I am dating. I like I really ask deep questions. Primary roles or 50-50, things like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that I would find myself in a situation with a person I am struggling to adjust with. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I, I, I know what I'm getting myself into. And... I don't have all the answers, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but I feel it's like it would be very like if I if 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 I get into something as serious as marriage, I'd be very I, I'd expect a, I'd expect certain things, um, good or bad, um, and 
it would be with the person I think it's worth doing that with. Right. And that's da- that's dating intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always yeah. find mm. the like uh, conversations with with people who are, are not married yet and what they think about marriage and what they think it's like and what they think they know. It, for me, it is like the most intriguing thing because like I'm standing on the other side Thinking he has with like no 10 idea. years of experience and I'm just going, mm, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I like the excitement. Uh, <laughs> hey, don't like, get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not looking at it like, huh, it's a rosy thing or whatever. No, no, no. I, I'm I, just I, you saying. sound like, I, I feel like you, you definitely sound like you, you know what you want. I mean, I think I say this a, a lot, like uh, on on the show, that the level of self awareness that one person, a person has before they get married, is always like the biggest mm-hmm. sign of of how ready they are, mm-hmm. because the more you know yourself, yeah. the more you know the things you you're willing to learn, you know the things you're willing to put up with, you know the things that you're willing to compromise on, and the things you're you're not gonna compromise on. So the earlier you sort of know yourself, I feel like it makes life so much easier because you're not going to stand for shit that you don't want in your life. And also with the partner, I'd say like while you're dating, you need to like literally ascertain certain things. You need to know what you hate about this person. If I'm dating someone, I need to know that uh, there's this one thing I really hate about this person, but the pros outweigh the cons. Like I, I, I can deal with it. I hate this about this person, but I'm aware of it. Yeah. And and you know that's uh, and uh, that person needs to know that about me too. Like I hate this about I, her. But I actually actually heard a very interesting thing um about what you're saying now. It was this guy who was explaining that when women look at marriage, like you you I don't know if you said I think you said this in the last show when we had you over. You said something about a woman could literally make marriage work with any guy she kind of likes. Mm-hmm. If he's kind and he's thoughtful and he's respect, respectful and, you know, and they like each other, a woman can make it work because women can kind of say, yeah, I like this, I don't like that, I like this, I like this, but I think overall we can do this. With men, however, which is why I would then agree that maybe the heartbreaks <laughs> of men are different mm. is because... With men, it's like, oh my gosh, I need that woman in my life. And you don't necessarily look at, I like this, I don't like this, I like this. You almost just decide that I need her and that's done. What, whatever she needs, if she needs me to become, like not, not losing your, your identity, identity or anything like that, but you start feeling like I would do anything for her, you know? And I feel like that's, interpretation of love and wanting to commit is definitely different between men and women. Mm -hmm. It definitely Mm -hmm. is because it's almost like for men, you're just almost stuck with that person because you're just like, that's what I want. That's it. It's that or nothing else. Mm -hmm. With women, it's almost like it's, yeah, that there's also, you know, and there's also that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we'd go, we can go on for it. I absolutely agree. <laughs> I absolutely but, uh, agree. Well, our time has elapsed. Uh, and uh, thank you so much to Tinder. Thank you. So much. Thank you. For coming through. I don't know if you've got any parting words uh, for, for, for audience. I think, yeah. <laughs> just uh, make sure you live your life to the fullest. Uh, yeah. and, um, don't live with any regret. Uh, whatever you're going through right now, it's just part of the journey. Um, but Whatever you do, just don't give up. Oh, thanks just for that. Just don't give up. Yeah. And Uh I think I'll only say, um, don't be afraid of being single. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good I one. Thought, I, thought I, you were gonna, like, I thought you were going to advertise your built on. I thought you were going to go into advert mode and be like, Kavu is doing the best built on in South Africa. Oh, that's true as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's true as well. Yeah, you guys have to pay me. We need, to, we need to put it on the screen. <laughs> yeah. So besides, besides, besides um, enjoying the best built on. <laughs> right. Um, don't be afraid, don't to, be be afraid to be single. Because there's pressure mm. to get married by any means necessary. And unfortunately, people go into like marriages that they shouldn't go into sometimes. Mm. 
So it's very important to find a person you know you can make it work with. So like the Diddy Cassie vibes. Oh yeah. Mm. That was oh my wild. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. All right, cool. Thanks guys for making the time and coming so, to the show. Thanks a yeah. lot. Yeah. And thank you so thank much you. everybody for tuning in. Don't for, don't forget to subscribe and uh, like our channel um so that we grow as well. Eh? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, cheers guys from DJ Tilo. Press so out. The motherland, the African man. Long as I'm alive, I'ma make a plan. Strong host to 